COVID-19, rush tape in the police. What's the commonality? Hi guys, welcome to Expert Link and me, David Ford, and another word from the street. So first of all, COVID-19. We're all doing our bit, aren't we? Self-isolating, um, social distancing, working from home, staying at home, doing what we need to do to protect the NHS and the wider society. And it's the right thing to do. It's what our government has asked us to do. That's the first thing. The second thing is rough sleeping. We had thousands of people rough sleeping prior to COVID-19, but from the valiant efforts of MHCLG, local, that's the Ministry of Housing, Local Governance, uh, Communities and Government, um, uh, local authorities, organisations and services, valiant, the incredible Herculean efforts they've gone through to make sure that they've got the most people off the street that they possibly can. And they've got thousands off the streets. And it isn't just them as a system, it's the individuals within it who are working 24-7 to make that happen. And there's also a shout out here to the hoteliers, the B&Bers, the private rented sector who've offered up the accommodation for those guys who were off sleeping. Big thank you to all of you. The police um, uh, have a role within all uh, society at the moment, haven't they? In helping to make sure that we stick to those rules on self-isolation, making uh, and, and, and uh, social distancing, which is absolutely fantastic. And they should be doing it because we need to protect the NHS and society. Here's the rub, guys, and it is a big rub. Right now, according to Crisis, there are over a thousand people rough sleeping on our streets today. So over a thousand people still rough sleeping who've not gone into accommodation or mostly not gone into accommodation. These guys, remembering they're coming from a place of trauma, from a, a place of uh, abuse, uh, mental health, substance and alcohol issue, abuse, all sorts of complicated and really serious challenges that they, they have with them. You know, um, and they're still out there rough sleeping. But there's also a cohort of people who've been into accommodation, um, uh, hotels, B&Bs, private red sector, um, put there by the local authorities, working with the services, um, who have left that, uh, that, that accommodation, either of their own violation or because they've been asked to leave or told to leave for sometimes suspect things and not necessarily things that were true or could be um, uh, factually proved, you know? And people might have leave for all sorts of different reasons. Perhaps the accommodation's too far away, all sorts of different things. These are complicated um, souls caught up in that trauma uh, and abuse, often, with, and, and that mental health stuff. So they've left that accommodation. So here's the rub bit. Um, the police have been asked to, uh, or the police uh, have got the power to make sure that uh, people uh, uh, self-isolate and have got somewhere to send them home. What's happening now is they're meeting these guys and these guys, they can't point them in their direction as they were before because there's nowhere to point them. They haven't got anything to offer. What are they supposed to do with them? Are they supposed to find them? Move them on? And where are they going to go? I'll tell you what I'm hearing what we're hearing at Expert Link is two things. Firstly, the absolute frustration within the frontline workers who are going out and meeting these guys and they can't offer them anything. Half the services that these guys um, need to access are shut down anyway. Food, um, day centres and things like that. Mental health services and substance and alcohol misuse services um, uh, are on reduced service. So they're not getting the full support that they need. What's happening is... Not only the um, the frontline workers absolutely frustrated and devastated that they can't offer them anything, but these guys, when confronted, asked to move. They're moving further and further and further away from the support networks that they have. They're going further to the margins, not just as, uh, of the city, but of society. With a, um, a morbidity rate, or, or sorry, of uh, um, a life expectancy of about forty-seven from our um, entrenched sleepers, from our our community. Um, and they're moving away from the support services they deserve. It doesn't take a lot to think about what might happen. Do you know, I'd be really interested in what's going on in your area. Are you a frontline worker? What's your experience? Are you somebody who's watching this, who's um, caught up in that maybe, or know people who are caught up in that, who've got no accommodation and no offers from local authorities now because the one that they've had uh, has expired for whatever reason and they've left it for whatever reason? I'd love to hear what hear from you. I'd love to hear from your comments. I'd like to hear from you what you think the police should be doing. Where's the guidance for the police? What guidance is there? Is there any guidance or should there be some guidance to support those who are rough sleeping? Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Press the like button, hit the share button, comment, leave your comments, 
Sh absolutely share it. Subscribe so you get to the next one next week. We got Obama for you next week. Press the, 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 the subscribe button and share it so we can get as many people in the, in the conversation as possible. The louder this conversation, it isn't about pointing blame, it's about raising awareness. So the louder the conversation, the more awareness around it and maybe something will happen. Until next time, guys, stay safe. Don't give up. Don't give up.